Excellent. <clears throat> Okay, welcome uh, to the in today's event. So careers in engineering online event. So we will have uh, about 100 of us, including guests and academics and our students have signed up. And but I understand it was just after the Easter holidays, so we might have some people uh, missed the emails. But because we're recording today, hopefully we can catch up and watch it on our YouTube channel. OK, so the event will last for two hours, two to four. So first part, uh, two to three will be uh, spotlight talks. So our employers are going to give us a little bit of information about who they are, what they do and how to how they recruit people and how students can, um, I guess, prepare to be successful candidate and to get jobs as well. But today we our organizations, our employers might not have any vacancies, but this is a great opportunity to find out what kind of careers out there for our students. OK, so um, let me just see. So careers team, our careers team, we uh, organize different events every month. So uh, career uh, conversations and industry insights events and also school specific division specific events like this one, engineering. And also we have some computing students and also masters quality and quantity and project management uh, students joined us today. So welcome everybody and please make the most of today's event. So if you want to get in touch with us, and careers and you can use the careers and skills website on our uws.ac.uk website and also our uh, email address which is careers at uws.ac.uk and you can find us on twitter at careers uws okay so um, today's format would be um, we are using ms teams uh, and welcome everybody. I'm glad you've managed to find uh, us using all those <laughs> links. Probably some of you got many emails, notifications, but you are here, so well done. Okay, so part one, we have uh, starting our spotlight talks with DBD International. So Finnan and Kirsty are here, so thank you. And next IBI group, Colin Riki is here, and Balfour Beatty, our <clears throat> partner uh, supporting us in many different ways. So thank you, Alan, Ross and Stuart. And also Lynn Products again, Chris, <clears throat> thank you very much. And Carolyn is uh, joining us from the HR department here uh, with Lynn Products. And then Mott McDonald, Richard, Laura and Rebecca are here to tell us um, different careers. And then Mabit, uh, apologies if I'm uh, pronouncing it wrong, but uh, Thank you, David. Again, another alumni, a very um, supportive partner. Thank you for joining us again. And the British Army, we have Brian and Captain Jim Taylor Bow, also from the Royal Engineers as well. And we don't have Jim Taylor from Amy today. Uh, it's a last minute change, unfortunately, but it, which means that we have our other organizations will have more time to tell us about themselves, which is great in some ways. And part two will be networking. So employers have been sent two links. So first link is here, you're joining today. And then part two would be your second link. OK, so students, you have been sent um, the list of different employers and the joining network links. Please don't start new meetings. Only use those links that you have been sent to. OK, so that would be the opportunity you go in and ask questions after hearing what all the organizations do and then we'll 350 if you could all come back to this uh, room this meeting and we can thank our guests and then close the event today do you have any questions is it clear for everybody Excellent, that's great. Thank you. OK, then, so we will move on to DBD International, Finnan and Kirsty. I'd like to give you the platform. Thank you. Hey, um, good afternoon. I am going to try and share my screen here. Um, I think we should be getting good at this by the, the way the pandemic is going. So I think I've shared it. Can everybody see the start of the presentation? Yes, we can see that. Thank yeah. you. Brilliant. OK, let's see how this goes. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm Kirsty and I've got Finn um, also presenting today. We're both UWS alumni 
Um, and we'll come back to tell you not just about DVD, but a little bit about the nuclear industry. So uh, we'll give you a whistle stop here as quickly as we can, uh, but we'll hope to see you in a little while as well. So I'll hand over to Finn for the first slide. So hi guys, I'm Finn and Cobble. I'm a process engineer at DVD. Um, so DVD is a, an advisory nuclear engineering consultancy, which I'm sure you can imagine are, are quite highly complex and highly regulated industries. So a bit of what we do uh, across the UK and the world right now, we're helping clean up a lot of nuclear sites in the UK under the NDA, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority. Um, one of the big bits of work we've got right now is uh, helping develop uh, strategies for handling legacy waste in Sellafield, which my colleague Kirsty Sloan is quite involved in. Uh, we're also helping AWE transform their business, which is a project that I'm involved in, which you can hear more about in the, the breakout rooms later on. Uh, we're doing some work with the US Department of Energy uh, to get involved in the nuclear sector over there. And also we don't just clean up nuclear sites uh, within the UK. We also have business over in Japan, TEPCO, which is the Tokyo Electric Power Company, um, helping remove fuel from the Fukushima reactors after the disaster. We're also helping the UK investigate the next generation of nuclear reactors, which you might have seen in the news at some point recently. And the offices which support this are in Warrington, uh, Birchwood Park Industrial Estate, uh, Cullum, uh, in Oxfordshire, and we have a, an office out in the US as well. Uh, next slide, Carter. Um, so we're really um, enthusiastic about hiring talented people, and we like to get the job done for our clients, but not just that, we like to be impressive and do something um, a bit different and uh, a bit with a bow on top and sprinkles if we can. So um, we're not just happy just to settle for the box standard solution. We want to do something impressive so that we enjoy, so our clients enjoy working with us and we can give them the best solution possible. Um, and when I say we think outside the box, we think outside the box. <laughs> there's no crazy ideas in our office. So it's a really great place to work. And um, there's a lot of different routes in for um, a lot of people. So myself, I've been with DVD since 2014. They supported me through university and full time since 2018. So I'm a long-standing employee. Uh, Finn's been with us for just over a year and has come in from the petrochemical industry. So we've got a wide range of um, places and experiences and um, disciplines that work with us. Our business is split into three different branches. Uh, Finn and I both sit under the nuclear engineering branch at the moment, but we work really closely with all three branches. Uh, miss mission optimization is a fancy way of saying um, making the process better and nuclear safety I'll tell you a bit about later on but it's pretty self-explanatory and um, because we work so closely with all of the departments if anybody in the company decides they want experience for example nuclear safety uh, we go and knock on the door of that department and say hey have you got a space and it's pretty fluid we can be moved across there for secondments um, and uh, depending on what client and projects on at the time so we get a wide range of experiences from this so i'm going to hand over to finn to tell you a bit more about uh, engineering and the optimization okay so the engineering consultants this is just a, a basic kind of project uh, overview um, as a consultancy company, we can be involved in one or all of the of the boxes that you see on screen here. So right now, the project that I'm working on um, has just been through concept design and we're currently in detail design. This involves your basic uh, engineering calculations, proof of concept, and then moving into detail design. We have those calculations being fleshed out um, and start getting involved in HAZOPS, optioneering to find the best solution to the, the client's problems. Moving on to procure procurement is sourcing the material, uh, the the bits of equipment you've designed and sized for, manufacturers that equipment being built, construction and installation is prepping the site and getting everything in, the pl in place and getting all connected up. Testing and commissioning is doing your first few runs of the plan or whatever you're designing. And the operations and production is actually the, the bulk of, of the, the life cycle of the plan, which could be you know, 10 to 50 years, depending on what it was designed for. And the decommissioning and dismantling is what it says in the tin, tearing it all back down. Um, decommissioning and dismantling is quite heavily tied in with the actual concept design and the detailed design as when you're putting these things up, you need to plan how you're going to take them down, which is something that a lot of uh, nuclear plants in the UK weren't built with that in mind. And it's why they're taking so long to decommission now. And it's why they're such a, a problematic, uh, problematic sites. Um, so if you just go to the next slide, slide Kirsty. So our mission optimization is, is tied in with, with the boxes that we've seen on the, on the previous uh, slide. So we basically want to take um, an input such as costing the risk analysis or the manpower resourcing 
uh, put that through a, a process where we can uh, look at all the data and define a clear goal of what we need to get a more optimized mission output. So for example, in the project that I'm working on right now, we're using heavily modeling software called AnyLogic to, to make everything more efficient. So for example, the, the manpower resourcing uh, for the plant we're designing right now, we're using any logic to model that better, build shift patterns around that, uh, find out how the plant that we're designing at the moment will integrate with the surrounding supporting facilities. So it's very handy for product import, product export, and an efficient uh, process. This gives lots of good example uh, benefits, such as better capital expenditure or better use of resources, and it also allows us to learn for future projects and apply and apply what we want. So I'm going to tell you a bit about nuclear safety. Um, nuclear safety is different from your regular process safety uh, simply because of the consequences behind it, which I don't need to tell you are much, much more severe. So um, we have to take a lot of time over um, everything that we do in the nuclear safety um, area. Safety cases are the main delivery aspect of this, and this is split out by saying safety is the state of a process or a plant, and the case is the argument or justification for that. So the idea is that we need to take, figure out the state of the plant or the process or the change that we're making and make a justification that it is safe and, uh, and back it up with, um, with evidence. And so that's what the safety case delivery team do. Oh, I seem to have lost a bit, there we go. So to do this, they really need to identify the hazards and the consequences, because if you don't know what the consequences of um, what could go wrong are, you're not going to know how to mitigate them. So in short, they take a take something like our scary tiger on the left hand side um, and make it safe. So if you went to the zoo and saw that tiger, you probably would run the other way and try not get too close to it. But um, the if you saw it in the enclosure, you would probably go and investigate closer up. And we do the same with plants. Uh, we take a plant, a site, a problem, a process, um, and we make it safe uh, for everybody that's involved working in it. So I'm hoping that's an easy analogy for everybody to understand. But um, when it comes down to it, nuclear safety, it has to be absolutely 100% on the money all of the time. And there's no room for error. And uh, that's something that we know is a big responsibility in our, our industry. So Finn and I have run through very quickly, as quick as we could, um, the, a bit about DVD, but there's obviously the wider nuclear industry as well, which we're happy to talk to you all about in the chat rooms. Uh, we're involved with a lot of the institutions, but particularly the Young Generation Network is a big one for us. Like We spend a lot of time volunteering with them and going to their events. And their events about the nuclear industry are second to none. They have a branch in Scotland, which I think meets not far from the campus, because I went to events when I was still at uni there as well. So um, we can tell you a bit about this. This is something you could get involved in before graduating. Um, and also the Nuclear Graduates Programme, which is an industry-wide programme. Neither Finn or I came through this, but we know enough about it to tell you some stuff on it. So even if you don't have questions, if you do or you don't, um, Come and ask us a bit more in the chat room. Um, and if you don't have questions, we'll tell you a bit more about the nuclear industry as a whole. Uh, come in for a chat and we'll see you shortly. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That was really interesting, you know, uh, for somebody as a careers advisor. Also, it's good to see what kind of um, areas different industries uh, are working on currently as well. So that's great. Thank you both. OK, next uh, we have IBI Group, Colin Ricky. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I'll share my screen now. Can everybody see that? Yes, we can see that. Thank you. Share my screen. Hi. Yeah, I'm Colin Ricky. I'm an associate practice manager, effectively a lead in our Glasgow office. Um, IBI stands effectively for intelligence, buildings, and infrastructure, and have engineering remits across all three areas. I lead a team um, along with other leads, I'm not the only one, um, of consultants, project managers and graduates uh, to support um, various sort of engineering style transport related projects um, across the UK. Um, so let me move on to the next slide, except it won't move. Oh dear, oh, here we go. So IBI are a global architecture, engineering, planning and technology fund, delivering intelligent transport systems, 
sustainable buildings and effectively cities and infrastructure of tomorrow. If you consider how mobility is changing and the type of vehicles we use are changing, we're involved in these sectors. Um, we've got 3,000 employees. It's a Canadian-based firm, but we're scattered across the globe, as you can see with the green shades. 60 offices across the six continents and the three core, cent um, three core sectors that I mentioned. Um, so we firmly believe that through design and technology, we can change how people experience their built environment. And that's not just about the buildings, it's about everything that integrates around that as well. This is our kind of UK base. Um, my, my boss, Leo Graham, is on the left-hand side, um, based out of Glasgow. Uh, this is our coverage in the UK and where our offices are. Um, so you're not just limited to working in the Glasgow office, there are opportunities if you come from elsewhere in the UK. So what do we what do we do? We work in um, software engineering systems and development of things like apps and software into cyber security. So anybody that's sort of got a computer engineering background, there's accommodation there. Um, we're moving into the connected and autonomous vehicles market quite rapidly now in the world. So IBI are working with a number of clients in this area, working with Ford heavily in America at the moment in Detroit, having taken over part of the old Ford plant um, where we are working to develop a connected vehicle um, sort of workshop and test bed, um, which is quite an exciting opportunity for us over there. We've also been working on connected vehicle strategies, Connecticut being the most recent one I'm aware of, but um, I'm currently working with Transport Scotland on something, on something similar. Um, they have a connected vehicle roadmap and that roadmap is effectively strategy and policy that the government needs to deliver. So they use consultants such as ours in the transport and engineering field to, to support that. Um, we're also supporting the um, vehicle electrification. As you're probably all aware um, and consciously aware, this has been a huge move as we move towards decarbonisation. Um, so we are supporting um, on-street and wireless charging projects, um, man support working with partners um, to develop, uh, to deliver on vehicle charging systems and maintenance. Um, and also the whole new mobility concept. Um, if you've heard of the concept of living labs, um, you know, where we have Los Angeles as part of the whole urban movement lab. And, and it's really just to get people to think about how they travel and how they move and uh, a bit of thought process behind the old traditional ways of getting around. Um, we deliver software platforms. Um, so a lot of uh, our team in the office is principally um, design and consultancy and uh, a solutions based um, team as well. So we're, we develop um, apps and software to support travel and transport. I think one of the, the big things, I'll jump a screen here, one of the big things to mention is that you probably, well, I'd like to think maybe you're all aware of the Traffic Scotland service. So the Traffic Scotland information service um, is available as a mobile app. It's all the information you see displayed on the variable message signs and the speed limits that pop up on the gantries over the motorways. Um, a, a lot of the software is delivered effectively by IBI through contract to Transport Scotland and that's what our team work on. Uh, we're also, um, uh, from the beginning of March, we're, we're also manning the um, Queen's Ferry Crossing control room, or the Traffic Scotland control room, that's based next to the Queen's Ferry Crossing. Um, so we manage all the staff in there that looks after the whole network, all the incidents, the information that goes out to the public, all through the Traffic Scotland information service. Uh, back to this one, the Queen's Ferry Crossing itself, um, the engineering services we delivered there was the full ITS design package for the Queen's Ferry route. So from Hall Beath all the way through to Scotstown where it meets the M9, um, all of the ITS design work there was done by um, a team in IBI. Um, next slide. Uh, it's just really to say a, a thank you for listening. I'll just finish off by saying in terms of recruitment, um, during the summer months, we're always looking to take on graduates, sometimes internships, and usually we'll have vacancies open for graduates as well. Career paths tend to be that sort of graduate engineer 
with a path through to sort of consultant, senior consultancy, and then into the sort of practice leads like myself. If there's anything I can answer, then please feel free to join me in the next room. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. That was very informative uh, as well. So I'm hoping students are taking notes who they are going to speak to. Um, and uh, I understand, obviously, you can't be in the same in many rooms at the same time, but our guest speakers mm. will be hopefully waiting for you to uh, come and network until the time is up. So that's great. Thank you. So our next speakers are from Balfour Beatty, Alan Stewart and Ross. Over to you. Thank you. Afternoon all, I am Alan Gilmore, I'm a project manager in the civils business with Balfour Beatty and I'm also a UWS alumni uh, alongside Ross and Stuart uh, from our civils team at uh, Depot M77 at Newton Mearns. I'll really just pass over to Ross who's going to run through our uh, slides and then as they invite everybody to join us in the, the networking event afterwards and we'll be happy, happy to answer any questions you've got about Balfour Beatty and what careers we can offer. So over to Ross, thank you. Thanks, Alan. <coughs> um, so, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Ross. I'm a section engineer with Balfour Beatty. Um, I've given some presentations before to some people. So, some people might know Balfour Beatty, some people might not. So, we'll take you a wee whistle stop tour of our company. And, like Alan said at the end, uh, hopefully in, in the, the breakout groups, there's, there's plenty of questions. So, I'll just continue. So, Balfour Beatty, I hope. People have seen us out and about before, so we're a leading international infrastructure group, uh, finance, develop, build and maintain vital infrastructure uh, that we all depend on, we all use every day and probably a lot of people don't realise that what they use in their everyday life, that Balfour Beatty has had a part to play in it. Um, was just a, a short video there to kind of briefly show some of the things that we do. I've also got a slide here to show uh, some of the sectors that we work in. Uh, so transport's the first one. So we have the maintenance contract to the fourth rail bridge. Uh, we also take part in expanding and redesigning uh, Queen Street Station. We have a sector in power and energy, which is our transmission and distribution sector within Balfour Beatty. Uh, social infrastructure, the building on the right hand side is the Gatti building at St Andrews University, which is a marine biologist um, or marine biology building uh, for research. And the bottom one is a new building that's recently been constructed at Strathclyde University. Um, during the week, breakout rooms, myself, Alan and Stuart, we'll also talk about some projects that we've been on, as well as giving experiences as well. So just a, a short timeline of, of Balfour Beatty through the years where we started and where we are and where we are continuing to evolve. Um, so we started in 1909, as you can see up the top left hand side, um, some Remember some recent projects, you've got ones in 
2005, where we carried out the widening of the, the M25, and recently there in 2016, uh, where we carried out works for the Olympic Stadium. Let's move on. So the most important part, which I think most people uh, are on the call today for, is to see where uh, the employment opportunities are. So um, for Balfour for BT ourselves, we we like to to get as, as many young people into the industry as we can. And I'll just quickly go on and talk about uh, ways that we, that you can get into to our company. So one of the first ways is a graduate program, which is probably the way uh, most of you on the call would, would, would get into uh, our industry. I know specifically myself and Stuart, that's how, how we came into the business. Uh, so it's a two-year graduate program, which is Balfour BT's 5% club, where they heavily invest their time uh, into growing you as a person, um, constantly engaging with you, as well as investing in uh, courses to, to get you the best you can be. And there's also then a follow-up Emergence Talent Plus, which is an extended two years after the uh, graduate programme, which again, continue to, to upskill uh, as much of our workforce as possible. What we offer, so as I've touched on the graduate scheme, but there are other opportunities such as apprenticeships or uh, depending what year you are at university, you can apply for work experience or placements where you can come on and work with us uh, in the summer, uh, whatever contract that may be to gain uh, vital experience within the industry. But there's also other opportunities, not just building and civils, there's also a uh, communications, PR, IT, HR department, finance, legal as well. So there are plenty of opportunities within Balfour Beatty and not just civils, which, which everybody predominantly thinks that, that that's what we do. Just goes on. So why why join Balfour Beatty? Well, the, the four bullet points kind of speak for themselves. So we're a diverse organisation uh, dedicated to find talented individuals from all backgrounds. Uh, never feel like you might be victimised. If you're fit for the job, we'll be able to get you in. Uh, you'll become part of a team. Uh, always encouraged to grow. Like I said, we'll be putting on you know, plenty of courses to, to, to continue your development. Uh, take, take a challenge, build a career within the industry. Uh, that's always involving with new technologies uh, and becoming ever more sustainable as well. But like the last one says, most importantly, it's, it's a great sense of achievement. Uh, I know it's quite cliche, but if, if you do drive up and down the country and you see that you, you're, you're part of something that improves people's lives, it's, it is a, a good feeling. So the last two things there. So if you want to get in touch to... Um, hopefully be part of our company. The Emerging Talent email is up there, as well as the current uh, website where you can gain more information on uh, our current careers or dates when to, when to apply. But again, any questions, uh, we'll certainly be here in the breakout groups to, to answer them. And that's it from us. That's great. Thank you, Ross and Alan. Um, yeah, we really appreciate Balfour Beatty's support. Uh, you also are mentors as well, uh, uh, mentor our students. So we appreciate that. Thank you very much. OK, so our next speaker is from Lynn Products. So Chris and Carolyn, give you the platform. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> okay. I'll kick things. Okay. I'll kick things off, and then Carlin will come in at the end. Um. Oh. Sorry, I picked up the wrong presentation. There we go. That one's better. Okay. So, I'm not sure if MD's ever heard of Lynn. Uh, some people might be well aware of us. Uh, 
Can you hear Chris or is it just me? No, you I can't, can't hear him. him. He's frozen. No, it's, we've lost him. I think you've frozen. Or I guess if you froze, you can't hear us. So, Carolyn, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yes. I, am, I wonder if I can take Chris, are you? Are you back, yeah. Chris? I can hear. Yeah, you're back. Okay. Yeah, OK. I think we've got a dodgy, dodgy connection here today. Chris, you could try just dropping your video for now whilst you're presenting. If that would help, it might just reduce the amount of width you're using. It's, it's been the same with other day. She's been presenting as well. So I'll see how it goes. I'm sure Carolyn can jump in. OK, so yeah, family run company. Um, started by um, Ivor Tiefenbrunn on the right there in the photograph and now succeeded by his son, um, Gilad, who is the CEO. Um, we started off in Castle Milk, um, so always been a local company here. Um, been going since 1973, so it's a big year for us next year. And we're 170 staff. Um, we're now based out of a purpose-built facility, quite a nice factory that we have in Eaglesham. And we design, manufacture and sell some of the best hi-fi equipment you can buy in the world. And we export that all over the world. So we're quite well known in the hi-fi industry. So it all started for us with uh, the record player, the Sondek LP12, and it's still thought of as the best record player you can buy in the world. So that's the reference deck that everybody else measures themselves against. So if anybody here has got one of those, then you'll know what I'm talking about. As well as the record player, um, obviously things have moved on quite a bit since the record player came out. Um, so we now also sell speakers, amplifiers, and the big thing for us is network music players. And again, we make the best network music players in the world. So the jobs that we have here in the factory at Lynn, um, in engineering, we have manufacturing engineering who look after lots of different things, including quality, uh, machine programming, um, shop floor production engineering, things like that. We have mechanical and acoustic design, electrical and electronic design, which includes um, circuit board design, um, power, power system design, all sorts of things like that. Software development, so we produce all our own software for to run the products and to handle the products using apps and things like that. It's all done in-house. And then productization is a department which looks after how we get the software into the products and um, how we test them within the factory. Other departments we have, as has been mentioned by other guys, um, all the things you need to run a factory, production, purchasing, logistics, facilities, and so on and so forth. So everything's here under one roof with us. So our design departments, just to pick out a couple, um, you could be involved in design, everything from circuit boards to uh, enclosures for products, um, very finely designed uh, arms, tone arms for the record players, speakers, all sorts. It's quite a wide variety, very, very specialist products. And we make it all here under our roof. So we do circuit board population down our automated lines. Um, we do all the machining in-house. Um, we have full assembly area automated warehousing, AGVs, all types of things like that. So quite a forward thinking factory and always has been. So looking at the manufacturing industry, what we've seen recently is drive towards automation, uh, drive towards data gathering and use and digitalization. Localizations become big in the last couple of years for obvious reasons, um, where we used to say, you know, it's easy to get things globally. It's now much more difficult. So we're getting much more local which means that um, we are being more rational about what we buy and what we use, and we're relying on ourselves a lot more. And sustainability is huge for us now as well. Uh, ways of working, we've seen massive changes as well. So we now have a, a, a huge blend of remote and factory attendance, which wasn't the case a couple of years ago. Cross-functional teams are massive for us, so departments all link together very, very well, and that makes the business perform a lot better. Flexible hours, uh, high flow of information between colleagues and cloud-based collaboration are all massive for us now. Chris, are you able to move the slides on at all? Have you froze? Chris, um, have you fr frozen again or uh, which slide are you on just now?
Okay, slide eight here. Yeah. Carlin, just in case if you you're muted, you know, yeah. Hi everyone, sorry about that. Can you can you see the slideshow now? Because I think it froze when Chris was doing it. Yeah, I think it's flashing just now. Oh my goodness, I don't know what's happened with this slideshow then. It's not even moving on for me. I do apologise, we're having some technical difficulties here. No, it's okay. Now we can see it. You can see it now. I can't get it to right. There we go. So this is like the one, eight. the last one that Chris shared, wasn't it? Came in the family. I'm just going to whiz through it because Chris has talked about all of this. These are pictures to go with what Chris was talking about. The Sondek LP12 uh, turntable. These are some of the other products we, we make that Chris was talking about. These are some of the roles and departments that we have in Lynn that we recruit for, which Chris has mentioned already. Some more parts that we build in the factory. These are some pictures of the factory as well. And we're, we've invested millions in new technology and machinery. So um, a lot were very self-sufficient, as Chris mentioned as well. So what I'm here to talk about is um, a bit about the culture and the people side of things at Lynn. Uh, people uh, are our priority. We appreciate and understand that we can't do anything without our people. So we really are focused on looking after people. And these are our key principles. We're very, very focused on ensuring everyone has a healthy work-life balance. And as Chris mentioned, there is a trend towards flexibility now. Also at Lynn, we don't do evening or weekend works. We ensure that uh, all our colleagues have adequate rest and they don't get stressed out. We ensure that everyone looks after their well-being. That's physical health and mental health. We're a healthy living, a healthy living awarded employer. We offer employee assistance uh, for counselling, for mental health support, but we also do a lot uh, to encourage physical well-being in terms of classes and an on-site gym, etc. Um, we also make sure that our leaders are trained in leadership development to encourage a culture of support. Uh, we're very much into respect and we respect each other. We have got a set of simple behaviours um, predominantly revol revolving around trust and making our colleagues feel valued. And we do have um, we do have um, lots of benefits to ensure that our colleagues feel valued as well. We offer plenty of training and uh, development, opportunities to progress internally, and we absolutely encourage everyone to be the best they can be. We, you own your career, so if you need training and development or support, we absolutely 100% offer that as well. And also at Glenn, communication is very, very important. Everybody in the business is aware of where we are, how we're doing, future plans, the CEO gives regular updates, the managers give regular updates and attend regular meetings. We also have a culture hub, social media for our employees, and we do staff surveys to encourage staff input and ideas. The ways to join Lynn, like very similar to the organisations that I've spoken already, we do encourage young talent to come on board and develop them through apprenticeships. Oh, sorry. Sorry for interrupting. I think the screen is just flashing just now, so maybe we can just stop um, sharing and then if you speak, it might be easier, if that's okay, because people can't hear, see the screen. It's just flashing. Oh, thank you. Right. Sorry about that. Sorry about the technical difficulties we're, we're having. I apologise for that. So I was just talking about ways of joining Lynn. Like the aforementioned presenters, we also encourage apprenticeships. We encourage summer interns. We've had interns that have come down a summer placement. Then we have supported and sponsored them through their final year at university, and they are now with us permanently. We also have graduate programmes, particularly in the engineering field, and we have direct recruitment. At the moment, we're, we're, we're fortunate that we're doing a lot of recruitment. We're doing very well. So we're in a position where we do have lots of opportunities. 
At the moment, we're looking for some manufacturing engineers, an electronics engineer, and we have a couple other vacancies. But if anybody wants to come and ask about how to join Lynn, then we look forward to speaking to you in the breakout group. I think that is all we wanted to cover at this part. Um, but certainly we look forward to speaking to you and answering any questions about Lent in the breakout group. And we do apologise for the technical difficulties during that presentation. Sorry about that. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, Demara says, uh, no flashing, good presentation on my side. So I think it's, it worked for some people and it didn't work for some people, but uh, you can ask more questions in the breakout room. So thank you, Chris and Carolyn. And so, you know, it's, IT is great when it works and when it <laughs> doesn't, we notice it, don't we? Yes, yeah, so it's not your fault at all. You know, there's nothing we can do about this, but thank you very much. OK, so next our speaker is um, Mott McDonald from Mott, Mott McDonald, Richard, Laura and Rebecca. Welcome. Thank you. Hi there. I'm going to try and break the mold and keep to five minutes if that's possible. Let's see how I get on. Um, let me know if you can see that screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Thank you. Good stuff. Right. I'll stop seeing any messages once I maximize that. OK, so Mott McDonald, we have a large office in Glasgow of a few hundred people. In Charing Cross, we're um, a developmental consultant, and as you mentioned, we've got three of us here today to talk to you afterwards. This is what we are, this is what we do. I won't read out the slides to you, but basically, traditionally, you probably think of us as designers, engineering designers, but these days we're much more multidisciplinary, so we're here today primarily looking at mechanical and civil engineering students to join us. And you could say probably traditionally we've not had that many join us from the University of Western Scotland, so hence it's great to be here today. So thanks for inviting us. These are the sectors we work in. And I think in my 30 year career with what McDonald, I've worked in pretty much every single one of those. So we cross over with many of your previous speakers, actually. Here's some numbers about the company. One oh boy with them. I think the key one that jumps out to me is the 16,000 employees. We've got about 30 offices in the UK, including about five in Scotland, I think. Aberdeen, Inverness, Lerwick, Glasgow, Edinburgh. Um, random picture of an athlete to go with the random picture of a dog earlier on. These are the career paths that we have, so you can see why he's talking to you today. A lot of engineering related career paths. A little bit about our graduate recruitment. So we tend to recruit between about September and November time. So the next one should come up later in the year for recruitment in 2023. That's primarily what you'd be in for. But also we would look at interns and placements as well. As mentioned there, primarily summer placements, we take on, let's say, about between 10 and 20 graduates for our Glasgow office every year, predominantly civil engineers, but some mechanical, some electrical. And then every now and again, we recruit industrial placements. It's not something we get asked for much, but we can talk about that in the breakout room if it does interest you. That's a list of the careers website for us. Um, you, you do have the opportunity to move around um, across the UK and overseas when the opportunities arise. That's a little bit of um, information about how you get through the recruitment process. It's a strength based assessment. It's online and then once you get through that, you move through to the interview process. But it's fairly painless, I think, fairly interesting process. Thanks very much for the presentation and I probably won't make it into the breakout rooms, but my colleague Rebecca, who's a mechanical engineer and Laura, who's a civil engineer, will be there to answer any of your questions. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, Got you yes, some time I back there, Uganda. 
Yeah, well done. Yes, you are very efficient. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, hopefully students can ask more questions in the breakout rooms. And one thing caught my eye was the online strengths based assessment. So I'm sure uh, many, you know, all companies have different assessments and uh, different recruitment pr uh, process. So it would be good to find out more about that in the breakout rooms as well. And many students reach out to careers advisors asking for sample assessments and tests and things like that. So it, this is your chance to find out about this exactly. OK, so make the most of these opportunities. Guys. OK, thank you very much. And we move on to our next speaker, David. David Gladman from Mab. Thank you, David. Hi, there. Hi everyone. Uh, so my name is David Gladman. I am a process. I won't be sharing anything because I had to swap laptops, um, but uh, I'm a process safety engineer with Mabit. Uh, we are a consultancy that deals in multiple different um, aspects of society. We do design, environmental consulting, health and safety, planning and development. Uh, but as I said, I mainly work in process safety. That's across the board from anything aside from Kirsty's nuclear stuff. Um, so my most recent projects have been on distilleries and on a brand new gigafactory. Um, in addition to working with uh, MAB in the past, I've also worked in operational roles such as oil and gas terminals, uh, sulfur recovery, uh, top tier chemical and food and pharmaceutical manufacture. So in the breakout room, if you've got any kind of general career questions about what you want to go into, I'm always open to hear them. And that's about it. That's great. Thank you, David. Uh, another supporter, our partner. So we appreciate your support as always thank you and yeah so david has obviously worked in so many different areas as well uh, ask away different questions in this uh in the breakout room so thank you okay our next uh, and last for this part is the british army so we have brian tate the scottish recruitment officer and also captain jim taylor bull the, from the royal engineers welcome i'll up the spotlight Hey, good afternoon. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with me. Hopefully, it's going to it's going to work. Um, I'll just do a quick introduction. My name is Brian Tate. Uh, I look after all the British Army officer applications in Scotland and uh, Northern England. Uh, um, my background is that I've had 32 years experience with both the Air Force and the Army, and uh, and now I, as I say, I look after every single person who makes applications, and I interview every single person who makes an application to be an officer in the Army in Scotland. I've also joined with my colleague today, uh, Captain Jim Taylor Bow, well, and he's going to just give you a run through of the Royal Engineers within the Army. Over to you, Jim. Okay, can we have the, the next slide, please? This is hopefully now it's going to work. It's been sitting for a while. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Captain Jim Taylor Bow, and uh, I'm one of the chartered engineers within the Royal Engineers in the British Army. I've served for 14 years. And um, I'm also a graduate, both at bachelor's and master's level. Uh, next slide, please, Ian. So who are we? So um, the Royal Engineers, or the Sappers, as we're commonly known. Uh, so we enable defence uh, to live, move and to fight. Now, the core of Royal Engineers, we have a role of every part of the battlefield. So on the front lines, we support the rest of the army, uh, bridging rivers, clearing routes through minefields and using explosives to gain access to buildings uh, and destroying bridges behind us. Um, so, but behind the front lines, uh, we also work to improve transport routes, uh, construct camps, uh, build runways and carry out explosive disposal to make areas safe after a conflict. Uh, we use our specialist skills to help rebuild after conflicts as well, uh, providing humanitarian support for the UN in the forms of water production, electricity supply, uh, infrastructure, and support to medical facilities. Uh, this provides essential health care to local populations. Uh, and wherever we are, the Royal Engineers, with our skills and versatility, uh, is a match for any challenge that we may face. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so who are we after? So I'm aiming this brief at uh, what we call SAPR officers. So we're, we're looking at mostly graduate levels, but you don't have to be a graduate to with engineering to come and serve in the Royal Engineers. Uh, so we're looking for a variety of people that can lead our soldiers, uh, that are adaptable, 
uh, very physically and mentally robust to take on the challenges of what we offer around the world at incredibly short notice. Uh, problem solvers, we're often out on the ground on our own, uh, looking at problems with five, ten minutes to come up with a solution before the battle creeks coming through. Or within humanitarian, as we saw in the Caribbean, we are on the ground within 24 hours offering relief and support. Uh, we learn to seek from others. Um, this is looking at ourselves. We'll continue to develop you as you join the Army, and especially as a Royal Engineer, we'll continue to give you professional development throughout your career. But most importantly, we're here for our soldiers. We are the leaders. Uh, as you join the Army, you'll go to Santast for a year, and you'll have a year of leadership training, uh, teaching you how to look after and lead your soldiers, which is our absolute priority. Next slide, please. So when you join the Royal Engineers very early on in your career, we'll teach you the knowledge of our artisan trades. So how to lead our soldiers, and they are the experts at providing their skills and services wherever we may, may be. Uh, we'll also teach you to be a military surveyor, to go out on the ground and provide reconnaissance. And we'll give you an understanding of military infrastructure and civilian infrastructure that when we look to work with our civilian partners and contractors, uh, we'll give you a massive sense of our core history. We're over 300 and 20 years old now, uh, going right the way back to Napoleonic times. Uh, we'll also look to teach you about military plant equipment and uh, how we do earthworks, how we prepare things if we're providing defensive or if we're helping with flood re relief. Very, very different scenarios that we can use our plant equipment to support. Uh, importantly, we'll, we'll teach you about task management and we'll give you very early on your APM project fundamentals qualification. So something you can take away, a civilian accredited qualification that you'll get within your first year in the core. Uh, we'll teach about basic military structures. And again, we can't get away from it anymore. It's health and safety is so important that we look after our people. Next slide, please. Uh, where could you serve? Um, it's very hard to do a quick summary of what we do in five minutes, but uh, we, the very different roles, or well, we can talk about this after in the breakout rooms. But it is essentially close support is up front with infantry and the armor as well up front uh, fighting the battle, providing them support to get into places to cross bridges. Uh, force support, which is where I've had most of my career, we're, we're the, the army's construction force, we're the builders and we're the operators. Uh, we have our EOD, which is more likely to be known as bomb disposal in the civilian world. We also take on geographic support, so geography students that have come through will take them take them on board, give them extra skills and teach them how to be uh, geographic intelligence analysts. So help the, the hierarchy look at a battle space and work out where we can be, where we can go and how we're going to get to places we need to be. And uh, infrastructure support, which is something I'll come on to in the next slide, uh, which is where we take our graduates and what we could offer you in that front. And also you could work within a training establishment. Uh, we'll give you a PGC uh, and we'll, you'll go and teach and actually teach the next generation of the Royal Engineers. So next slide, please. So professional engineering, what can we offer a graduate? Uh, this is a scheme I've been through. It's a two year course based down in the Royal School of Military Engineering and it's taught by Cranfield University. Uh, we'll give you a master's degree in the field of military construction engineering in civils or mechanical and electrical. Uh, so broken down over those two years. So seven months is the academic phase. So you'll do very fast canter through the academic that go into a master's degree. So we do all of your exams and work with Cranfield, but you work out of our barracks here. But the most important thing we leads on to the 18 month industrial placement, which gives you your experience and your credibility. Uh, and that's done across the board with the UK main contractors. But we offer that chance to go to America for 18 months and also to Australia to work alongside our partner, John Holland. Uh, when you come back and you finish your dissertation, uh, will then the army will then pay for your chartered review uh, through whichever organization you choose to go through and uh, we'll provide that free of charge and we have a 95 percent pass rate of getting our engineers chartered status at their first attempt uh, throughout these two years you, you're paid a full salary you're, you're in the army uh, it goes along with your career so you're looking to earn upwards of around about at the time 40,000 to 50,000 to come and do this course uh, next slide, please, Brian. So that's the end of my part. I'll hand you back over to Brian, who will give you a quick rundown on the recruiting side of the army. Well, I am conscious of time, and I do want to keep just two times. So what I'll do is we'll keep this sort of the recruiting, the application process, etc., to our breakout rooms. 
So hopefully we'll see a few of you into the breakout rooms now, sir, in, to ask answer any questions that you may have on the army and in and other roles that we do have within the army as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Brian and Jim. So um, that's us very efficient again. So uh, we are on time to start uh, our next part. So what we'll do is I'll just stop the recording um, and then we'll move on to the next part.